My name's Mark, I'm at the shop, and uh, we've got our first real uh, Z900 problem. So, uh, just riding along, was it yesterday, wasn't it? Yeah. And uh, on the way to Tesco's, um, it started to really uh, make a horrible noise. So what I've done is, is I literally put the lapel mic down here, wrapped it around the handlebars, and recorded this. So what you're going to hear is um, the uh, the noise that it makes, and it's all over the place. It's intermittent. I say intermittent. When you accelerate to a certain speed, you start to hear it. When you get off the power and engine brake, you start to hear it. And uh, so we're going to analyze that problem and find out what's going on. But I've got the dial test indicator on the brakes. Um, this stand I've got right here now, this is not an under the jobby jobby stand that's tucked away. I don't know if it's at home. Um, but any road, I've got different sets of paddock stands. I'm going to do a video about them. Um, but the other paddock stands, I've got the hook on that go on the bobbins, blah, blah, blah. blah. And the front is basically up here under the steering column, lifts the whole front up. Um, this stand, these are horrible stands, whoops. <laughs> I say horrible stands and then kick the machine onto the floor. This has, where's the bloody ends for this, Isaac? Can you see it? So, first things first is I've got, um, an, you know, a R and G crash bobbin thing just to protect the ends here. Uh, yeah. And the stand has these type with the cradle jobby problem is is with the pinch bolt on this side these are more for um, conventional forks not USDs and when it goes to grab it hits the ABS sensor I don't like that on this side it's got the pinch bolt so I don't like that it never sits on properly take them out stick a rod there is the wheel balancing stand rod that's for axles that goes it's perfect width to go through here through here this isn't the best way to do it obviously um, but we're sat inside the axle, so it's not the end of the world. If we scratch up the inside of the axle with the thread, there, yeah, you can see it bowing a bit because it's taking half the weight of the bike, so it's taking about 100 kilos, thereabouts, with a 50-50 distribution. Can you grab this toolbox, Isaac, and get it inside so it's not going to get wet? Uh, it's just spitting a bit. <coughs> Any road. So, uh, what was I going to say? I can't remember now. It was something. Yes, yeah, so when you spin this... 
she's proper dragging and she's dragging on one side and it, it gets intermittently worse then better then worse then better uh, just as we're sat here wheeling it around if you do it backwards and then forwards hey brock even with it fucking dragging seven fucking one and a half turns you complete cunt <laughs> any road so you've heard the sound while we're actually riding you can hear it ringing away like an absolute bastard um what we're going to do is stick the uh, test indicator on and see what we can see. Well, no shit. Right then, so let's get this little sucker off. There are 12, yeah, 12, I was going to say. 12 on there. Where's that extension bar? Where's the little extension bar for that, Isaac? Do you know? Uh, I don't. Must be somewhere. crack them off uh, ABS module we should be able to get this off without that being in the way can you get me uh, Allen keys I could fucking rust on that we'll have to clean that up and get some fucking uh, uh, ACF 90 uh, ACF 5 million on that bad boy aren't you why is it Is that going to be in the way? I don't really want to move it from its position. That's why I'm uh, not wanting to uh, fuck around with it. No Loctite from the factory. And these were tight. I imagine the spec's like 28 or something. I'll have a look in a minute. Right, so unclip that ABS jobby because I don't want it in my way, yeah. Back of the caliper. There we go, I should be able to get the whole thing out. Do you notice anything abnormal? No, not really. Let's get the pins out. Let's get this pin out. She's covered in shit, I'll give it that. Squeaky, squeaky. What we'll do as well is... Come on. What have you been a dick for? Oh, it's got a little recess, check that out. It's something thin to park that with. So on these pins, they don't have a blind hole, which is nice. This is literally a hole on the other end. So we can get it out. Yeah, it's just the pin's just been a dick. She's sticking a bit. That was an O-ring, whoops. There goes your pads. <laughs> That's quite cool. So this pin is a threaded pin with the actual shaft bit on it and an O-ring, look at that. And an end, That's quite sexy. That's probably to stop it getting stuck. So, pads. No copper grease on the back. It's just dirt. But weirdly enough, copper pads. Are these pistons, yeah, these pistons are fucking tiny, actually. They're hollow. I mean, like, really thin-walled. But the pad material doesn't look that bad. They've been wearing... Eh... Almost evenly. New pads, Isaac, mate. That's what we need, look. Yeah. I come into the... You can see, you see the wear lines there. She has been wearing ever so slightly misaligned. We had a problem with this at first. Ah, there's a big broken chunk. Still working? Yeah, man. There's a big broken chunk off one piece of the pad. 
So these stripes and this pad, Isaac, do you know what they're for? Uh, disperse heat. No. Don't know. What would that help with? Breaking. Number one is it helps get rid of some of the dust because there's a sharp edge that the dust falls into all this shit all over my hands. Uh, number two is it's a wear bar. That's how deep they do them. Uh, so when these disappear, because if you look, they're not all the way through. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They've got a wear bar on them. So basically when they disappear, if you can see that very well, there you can see they've got a certain depth to them. So when you get to, when, that, when these lines disappear, that's it, you need to change them. These are not far off. She's done 6,000 miles. Yeah, about right. Um, Especially if you rag about. Like I don't rag about, man. What are you talking about? Don't what you fucking talking about. You can see on there where they rub, right at the ends. Yeah. They're more than, that's asymmetrical pushing. So one pad's moving more than the other. Our clip. She's quite thick. I'll give it that. That's one hell of a spring force. Is that? That's a thick fucking Nora. That's what a millimeter, maybe a bit more. Give us get us my calipers out, Isaac, in the drawer that says measurement on it. Second one down on the bottom run. Yeah, the SPI ones will do. Um, so how thick is that? Fucking hell. 1.75 thick. That is one hell of a spring. None of the fucking calipers were a dickhead to get out. Uh, pads were a dickhead to get out, not calipers. Um, yeah, you can see they push directly against the caliper body. Uh, there is no, was there no spring in there? Usually they put a shim thing in there. Uh, we'll get a toothbrush in here and some brake cleaner and clean it all out. Pistons look absolutely immaculate, like you'd expect with the coating on. Um, I was at half expecting, it's only just started to happen though, so maybe one of the pads is shifting around or something like that. The lip on the discs, what are the minimum thickness of these bad boys? Uh, 4.5, can you get me my, uh, in that drawer, you can see it there, there's a black box that says Mitatoyo on it, it's got a silver sticker on it, grab me that. So it says minimum thickness of these rotors is 4.5 millimetres. Right, so you get the old... Uh, the old doodah. The old doodah, we zero that out. What do you reckon it is, Isaac? Uh, 5.4. No, 4.8. Go and find a different section of the disc, about the same place in the middle. She's covered in shit, 4.8 again. So what's the minimum? 4.5. Well, depends how big thick these were when they were brand new. I should have measured them really. What because otherwise, them? otherwise we'd know. Just say if they were five mil, and I reckon they were five mil. 4.86. Just imagine they were, you know. They wouldn't be like a stupid number. Like no, no, well you can actually measure that bit of the disc actually. Let's measure that bit. Yeah, five millimeters, bang on the nose. So the out bit of the disc that's never been touched. Let's get there. Yeah, 4.990. Depends where you grab it. Because it's a lip, it's a bit of a hard thing to get on square. There we go. See, that's saying 5007. So these discs were 5mm thick. Start with. That says 511. That'll be a lot of the dust and shit on it, though. So these discs started out, and that's really pinching it. Yeah, 4999, there we go. So, that's what we can work out. How can we work out how much we take off, Isaac? How much we take off? Well, we're, we're, we're running 4.8 now. Yes. Yeah. If we just grab the disc anywhere and measure how thick we're doing it. So, we'll call that 4.86. Right on the board. Don't knock that drink over. 4.86, yeah? And our initial was five, five mil thick. So above that, put five. So how much have I worn off? 0 0.14. 0 0.14, so write that, 0 0.14. All 
Right, fucking look at him go. Right, so I've done 0 0.14 in, no, no, you haven't finished yet, in 6,000 miles. Yes. Right, 6,000 miles next to it. Just put equals 6,000 miles. There you go. So, how many, how much have I torn off doing a thousand miles? <laughs> Get your calculator out. Fucking hell. I want you to do this so you understand this. So, what do you do to work out how much we take off by a thousand miles? Do 0 0.14 divided by 6,000. Or 6. Or 6. Let's do that. What do you get? Zero point zero two three 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 three. So zero point zero two. So put that. Zero point zero two. Right. So how long do I have left of my discs? About six thousand miles. So well, do I? No. If you tip, <laughs> work it out. No, don't just look at me. All right. So. How much have I got left before it gets to 4.5? What's the minimum? 4.5. So you'd have to do it in a... No, so what's 4.5? How bigger is 4.86 and 4.5? 2.6. 3.6. Oh, 3.6. So put 0 0.36. Put up there, anywhere you want, up there. You learn how to write like right-handed, you spastic. What? Zero point three six. That's what we've got left of usable rotor. Stop knocking things over. Sorry. Right. So divide that by zero point zero two. How many zero point zero twos are there left in that? Just just divide it by that, yeah. Eighteen. So what's that? Eighteen what? One thousand eight hundred miles. Eighteen thousand miles. Oh, seriously? Yes. Well. Right. At the current rate I'm doing, I could wear these to to that limit of eighteen thousand miles. See, people always say on forums and stuff, "How long should a pair of rotors last me?" Well, it depends how you ride and you break. You get what I mean? So, the the nearly a year that I've done. Yeah, because November would be a year. I've taken off that much, and this should last me another 18,000 miles to wear out that limit. However, at the beginning, for the first 1,000 miles or so, I was learning the bike and not been a knob. Regardless, on average, that's what I've worn out. Right. So I'd say, safely I'd say, that these dis rotors should last me another 10,000 miles. 15,000 miles at a push, you know what I mean? I would never, I wouldn't take it down to that 18,000. But I could, theoretically I could. And even when you get to 4.5, you can ride them at 4.5, 4 it's just any lower. They'd just feel a bit iffy. No, they wouldn't feel a bit iffy, they'd feel exactly the same. The disc is just getting thin. Which means that it's more likely, there's more of a tendency for it to heat fade quicker and it's more of a tendency for it to warp. Right, so now we've taken the caliper off, what we can do is we can tie this caliper up so it's out of our way and we can put it back on the stand and measure what we're measuring again. The disc, we can measure the disc. Right. right. We can also spin it and see if most of that noise has gone so we know that this is our problem. Oh yeah. Just taking the calipers out, cleaning the shit out of this and putting them back in might get rid of our problem. There might have been a bit of shit that broken bit, and I'll show you some pictures, the broken bit of caliper pad material might be stuck. It could have been stuck in them little grooves in the pad. Exactly, and because I popped it up or dropped out the pads, it's just gone, yeah? It's fallen out and gone. We'd love to be able to catch it, but I was a knob. Right, let's do that bit. Now, I don't advise doing this on these stands, especially a stand that's rigged like this. <laughs> but, you know, shit happens. Um, If you're doing something like this, I'd have Isaac here, he's just fucked off to the shops. Need some more cake. And uh, if you are doing something like this, I would 
advise that you have someone stand here and hold the bike when you dick around with it. When you're not touching it, it's fine. This pin's coming out a bit easy. Right. To get a true measurement of floating discs, you really need to take the calipers off so the pads aren't biased in any way. Then pads are ever so slightly off, as you can see from this picture, which is the measurement of the first set of pads, um, and it will bias the disc, so you'll get this, what looks like a bit of run out, especially if your discs are rubbing like mine are. Number two is, when you pull your pistons off like this, uh, your calipers off, make sure I don't knock that inside the rim. When you do this, make sure that you don't, um, what was I gonna say? Uh, pull your brake levers, because your pistons will close up and there's no pads there. Then you've got to go through the whole fucking rigmarole of just pushing them back and all that kind of rubbish. Uh, one other thing that Tim noticed that I'll point out, as you can see there, there's a number 36 in paint pen. It's just a little thing I picked up years ago from an old boy, uh, just right on your tire pressures. You know, when you're about to go off for a journey, you think, ah, shit, tire pressures. What is it again, especially with me, because I've got loads of bikes kicking around and stuff like that. Tire pressures are different. One thing I will say about tire pressures is that you'll notice that this is 36. We're on the tire. Ah, that's not good. What the fuck is that? Oh. What is that? Oh, have I killed a bearing? The only thing I can think of is, is my ABS sensor pushing against anything? We'll check that in a minute. That's bad. thrown a bearing already you've got to be kidding me no fucking way oh that's the dial indicator you dick <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's well good. Yes, thank God for that. Whew. <laughs> oh, I thought I'd fucking thrown a bearing. Oh, shit. What the fuck is that noise? Yes, so that scraping noise is when metal rubs or something rubs against the disc. Because they ring. Because they're free-floating. Um, these pads... Oh yes, I was talking about brake pressures. Sorry, sorry, let's carry on what the fuck I was talking about. Um, yeah, so I write 36 on there because if you look at this tyre, let me find where it says... Uh, uh, road use only, front wheel use only. Where the fuck are the pressures gone? Or is it on the other side? Let me just check the other side. Make sure that caliper doesn't fuck anything up now be careful because my caliper's just dangling in the air there we are it says uh, maximum pressure 42 psi when cold now the tire pressures on your pressures that's telling you the maximum pressure this tire can take before it starts to deform and you know go out of shape that doesn't mean that whatever's written on your tires is your tire pressure Bikes are different weights, different loads, so on. Some bikes even have a weight limit, so when you've got a pillion or you're a massive fat bastard, the tyre pressures matter, because when you sit on the bike, squishing that tyre is going to increase the tyre pressure inside the tyre, because you're literally, you're literally squashing the tyre. So if you think of a tyre as like a balloon, when you squish it like this, you're reducing the volume, which means the pressure goes up. 
you know, the opposite is said for when you go track day and racing and stuff, you reduce tyre pressures. The reason why you reduce tyre pressures is because the tyre is under so much stress and gets so hot that the air inside will get hot. And if the air inside gets hot, the pressure goes up. So it's that PV, PTV bullshit or basically just um, Bernoulli's principle and all that kind of rubbish. So, it's definitely, obviously, the calipers. So what we need to do now is I need to tie up this caliper so she doesn't whack anything. And then we're going to now measure um, with the dial test indicator the uh, run out and you'll see the difference between hopefully you'll see the difference between when something's pushing against it and when something's not oh, i shit myself a minute ago i was like you would have loved it i thought i'd fucking spun a bearing seriously <laughs> yeah how because it was making this horrible scratchy noise with none of the calipers attached i was like what the fucking hell's going on then i noticed that the, da the test indicator was on the other side <laughs> is it on video yeah 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 great I was like, what the fuck is that noise? Oh no, what's gone on? What's gone wrong? Nothing, dickhead. <laughs> Nothing. You're just a dickhead. You had like the shittest selection of sandwiches. Well, of course it is, it's the end of the fucking day. I got you this. What? What's Chicken, that? Chicken, chorizo, and Cornish gouda pastry. Oh god, that sounds gay, doesn't it? That'll do. It was either that or tuna and cucumber. No, oh, fuck that. <laughs> did you read that study that proved that homosexuality is caused by tuna? Yeah, I did actually. It's, um, yeah. Yeah, they both look about the same as they did before. What's going to the kind of bizarre? Yeah. Why is it making that sound? Because of the fucking... That's what I've just fallen for, you idiot. Focus, you feck. There we go. Right, this side. Yeah, it's about the same as it was. Right then, so what I'm going to do now is uh, clean this caliper out. The pads look the same. Um, but I will show you while I'm doing this because there's no point sucking eggs. Cleaning calipers out isn't exactly fucking rocket science. Um, the uh, pictures of the wear, well, if you actually look at the caliper, I'll highlight it. You can see right there that there's a big chunk missing. And she has. Um, Yeah, it scored a big chunk, so I wonder if that chunk was stuck. So these brake, I was talking to Isaac, and these brake pads are close to wanting to be replaced. So I'll order some new ones. And um, these are really easy to get into. I like this Kawasaki, well, uh, Nissin, well done. They're actually not that mucky, to be quite honest. Of course it's not that mucky, it's only 6,000 miles old, but she has been through a winter. Um, I really do like these calipers, they're just straight through, it's just like a block. You can't really see, it's just straight through, like a window, just straight through cut. I like that. Um, ah, is it, where, the, where the pads, where are these pads gone? Oh, behind, you're right behind, near the vice. Oh, yeah. Don't drop them. Keep them together, bring them over here. Um, you can see that there's a big score, so it looks like a piece is broken off. And... Uh, it's just because they're getting, just because they're getting old and thin. Um, just take the dust off the back of these fucking things. It's a good thing to keep your piston, uh, your pads together like that, and then give them a quick scrub like that. 
so the dust and shit come off. So, the, uh, yeah, it, it might have been that the pad has broken a chunk off and um, it's got stuck, it's got trapped. And I proceeded to drop the pads out, physically drop the pads out. She's uh, just, we've lost that bit, that chunk. We'll find out. Now, I was saying to Isaac earlier, if I had pads with me right now, I wouldn't change them. So if I had a brand new pad, pair of pads just sat here right now for this bike, I wouldn't change them. And why wouldn't I change them, Isaac? Because, actually no, I don't know. I'd be guessing. So I have a guess then. Because you've got a problem. Right, so yeah, because I've got a problem. So, because we've got a problem, we want to know if the problem's gone. So it might just be, like I say, a broken bit stuck in there or whatever. And um, we want to, uh, you know, just get rid of that problem. If we put new pads in, the problem persists. We've now put new pads in. It's a different variable. And you're not, if you have a problem, like a warp disc or whatever, you're not going to wear your bed your brand new pads in properly blah 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 so it didn't have this problem three days ago now it does or a week ago or two weeks ago it didn't have this problem now it does let's sort the problem out and then get new pads for it um so you might say which way do these go in they are symmetrical however there's these rub marks where they sit against the caliper these rub marks on the bottom, then ones are at the top, so the pads go in that way. You can label them if you want. Um, I haven't crossed the pads at all. Come on, you little shite. Put my clip back in. Little fucking bastard. This is one hell of a spring, I'll give it that. Need to be pushed. You push the spring down and force this in. That's what she said. Come on. <laughs> ah, that's where you push. Push there. Now, the state of the pin, as we've just seen, there we go. The state of the pin, I'm going to, when I buy some new pads this week, I'm going to buy a new pin. You can't really see much from there. There we go. So I've also got the torque specs. Let's sort that out. Right then. <laughs> I tell you what, you've got to give it to them. There's fuck all room in here. They just missed the wheel. Oh, come on, you fuck it. It's hard because the tripod leg is in the way, right where I need to be. Come on. <coughs> and obviously, We've got to get over the lip as well, which is the thickest part of the disc. Oh, come on, you fuckers. Come on, you can't. Do you know what? We'll split our pads a bit. Um, oh no, she's catching. That's why. There we go. Chada. There we go. That's why she wasn't. The pad was catching on the inside of the caliper a bit. It was going like like that. She was snagging on the bottom. Right. So 
there's no mention of Loctite or anything on these bolts, so no Loctite she gets. Snug them down. So the pin, I looked it up, the pin, not wrong one, fucking not wrong one. Uh, the pin is, oh fucking hell fire. <laughs> so the pin is um, 17, 17 newton meters. People say, well you don't have to do the torque for everything. It's like, dude, if you've got your torque wrench out, and fucking use it. You know, you have to torque all the bolts anyway, so you might as well just fucking torque that up. Um, yeah, let's fucking let's reset it. And the caliper bolts are 25. Twenty-four. That's not do me. They're dragging a bit because they're not re they're not set. Now you would pull the lever, but don't pull the lever because we have the other caliper off. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. Right, switch over to the other side, do the rest of it. Britney, Britney Spears in it a moment ago. Ball sack. That's your new name now. Ball sack. Socket ball sack. Socket ball sack to the rescue. How a ball sack you? Do you even want you didn't watch the turtles when you were a kid? It was way too late for you. Ninja turtles? Hmm. Or did you watch the revamped shit version? No, I watched Ninja Turtles. Trying to watch four turtles trying to fucking shag a ginger journalist. <laughs> right. Get our spring clip. And the cheap bastards, usually they make these springs out of uh, stainless, but in this case, they've fagged out and gone for zinc plated rubbish. But it's alright, it's so covered in fucking brake crap that it doesn't look like it's going to corrode. <laughs> uh, 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 where's that pin? Pads, is it next to the pads? Oh no, I put it in the box, that was it. So yeah, this pin looks like this and you could try and attack that with some emery or something. It is going to corrode more, this is zinc plated, so just fucking leave it, I'm just gonna leave it. Uh, because I'm gonna do the pads and get a new pin soon anyway. So we don't need to do anything with it. You could start to try and surgically clean these or whatever. They're shiny, that'll do me. It's the massive debris I want to get rid of. 
and same with our pads just get rid of the shit again you can see that wear mark at the top on this one this side they're at the bottom Not all calipers are a bit equal and the same, no matter what the feminists say. Drop these in. Make sure they sit right. Oh, come on, you fuckers. There we go. That's a tight fit for that one, count that one pissed up pad. Ah. That window's a really good idea until you have to put your fucking pads in and you realise they'll just drop out the other side. Right, we're in. We're in, Isaac. Where's that spring? <laughs> oh, fucking hell, there we go. We're in. Goes that way. It's self explanatory is the, the spring because this spring you can't put in backwards. Well, if you did, you'd notice immediately that it's not right. Um, Drop them in. That spring is a knob, isn't it? Come on, you fucker. Where's the Allen key? Yeah, so it's got two little tangs that sit on a little shelf. If you try and put them in the other way, they won't go. Back in there. Come on, you fuckers. <laughs> Again, the camera is right where I need to be. There we go. What we can manage. Chada. Right, make sure our, piss, our pads are in properly, unlike before. From the bottom. Fantastic. Chada. Chad. Learning from your mistakes. <laughs> yeah, like I say, these bolts that have nothing on them, so they're going back in with nothing on them. And check the manual. All systems are different. It's, sad, it's Sunday, she should be getting a wash, but it's late in the day and I wanted to sort this out or do something to try and find out what the problem is. This is still set to uh, 25. Just a little quick check. Make sure there's no slippage or anything. The torque wrenches, I like to wind them down below that torque setting. So you go below, I need 17, so I'll go below like 15, 16 there, 17 there. And then, oh, fucking hell. Get our pin. Jobs are good and what's your spin like? Right now, Isaac. Oh, hang about, let's get our ABS thing plugged in first. Can you um, pull the brake lever? How much? Just pull it. I got. God, it's probably just fuck brake pads to be quite. It's making the discs sing. Come on. Right, I got. Wait, 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 wait. I need to snatch them. I got. She sounds wonderful. Come on. There we go. Uh, that's now that's a bit of rubbing. 
We'll see if it starts to oscillate back on the road. I like just pull on a little bit and you spin it. Does it get better or worse? No, no. It's the thing is, it's on. It's under when the wheel's under a lot of load. She starts singing. The brakes work. They feel fine. Uh, it's just that fucking horrible noise. Any road, that will be part one of this. We'll see. There'll be an update, see if I've sorted it. And then we'll put the new pads in. That'll probably be a different video. It'll be a really quick one about just putting new pads in, putting new pin in and bashing them all together. Uh, brake fluid. I can't see what level that is. No one can see what level that is. Uh, actually, we'll put a bit of brake fluid in. Fuck it, let's do that. <laughs> What are you doing, Golden Locks? Mm -hmm. What? You've been a retard. Huh? You've been a retard. Okay. Right then. Fucking spider webs. Spindly webs. Never been open before this, has it? Never. Oh. Only use dot four. It's a good thing we've got dot four, isn't it? Do you know what? I don't think I have any other. I think I've got a bottle of five somewhere as a just in case. What's the difference between dot four and dot five? Dot five is silicon based, so it's not um, agro uh, agroscopic. But ooh, oh no, we're well above the line. She is fucking yeah, a bit milky, but uh, we'll leave that as it is. You could suck that back out, but variables, mate. So it's not me being lazy. There's a brand new bottle of dot four. Um, it's not about that, you know what I mean? If the level was low, she's well up to the top. There's no need. Well, the weirdest thing is, is that them brake pads are half worn, right? You know, they're getting close to been needing a replacement. How much did this shit did they put in? Because that level is meant to compensate for the brake pads going out. I'm Saying that, this reservoir is massive. And they put too much in. So it's almost, no, piss out. And trust me, Kawasaki never put too much in. If anything, they never do things too much. That costs them money. GIS screwdriver, so you don't fuck them. Jobs are good and see a bit pissed out. Bit, bit pissed out anyway. Um, people, people are always saying, I'll show you, there's a video coming soon about paint stripper. But people talk about um, brake fluid stripping paint. If brake fluid was a good paint stripper, would you use it as paint stripper? Well, to be honest, my plastic actually Paint. It's not stripped, it's just fucking slightly chewed it a bit. Yeah, did the paint didn't flake off and it's all fucking come off. No. For shit paints, for shit unprotected spray can cheap as you fucking like acrylic paints, yes, it will fuck it up and all the rest of it. However, if you get some of your brake cleaner, if you try to strip the paint off this bike with brake cleaner, that uh, brake cleaner, brake fluid, it's just fucking, yeah, it's just, it's, it's all dependent on the paint itself, how good it is, how long it's had to cure, lacquers, blah, 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 blah. Because that would be an excellent, because you can buy brake, brake fluid in fucking 10 litre and fucking 25 litre drums for fuck all. <laughs> Not literally for fuck all, I think it's about 40p. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that we wouldn't bother with paint strippers if it was that good. It can nah, fuck around with your paint a bit. You know, and but it is not peeling off unless you fucking douse it in it. Well, you've seen what happened to your phone when you dropped a couple of drops of DCM on it. That's DCM, yeah. Well, we'll talk about that at a different time. But um, yeah, you know, it'd be an awesome paint stripper because it's cheap, yeah. but it's really not that good. Might fuck your paint a little bit. But yeah, but like I say, nice. your paint has been your yours has been rattle canned, so that's why it just turns that stuff to shit. Any road, so brake fluid, no wonder I couldn't see the level, it's because it's fucking well above it. Um, yeah, brake fluid, and we might as well, this is the thing, you see, if you're going to change your brake pads, put a new pin in, which I'll do soon, might as well change the brake fluid. Brake fluid costs fuck all, it'd be nice to get some fresh shit in there. 
You know what I mean? People might be like, well, it's only six, 7,000 miles. It doesn't fucking matter, it's up to me. Something we're gonna do soon-ish with all the other things I've got going on is uh, the fork oil. The forks need heavier oil in it because they're spongy as fuck, um, the front forks. So I've kind of maxed out my um, rebound on the settings and it's still spongy as fuck. She's still basically bottoming out. Um, so we need to put some heavier oil in that, but that's that's a bit more involved. I say a bit more involved, I mean a shitload more involved. It's not just a simple fact of undoing the top and pouring some fluid in. Hope that makes sense for the time being. Like I say, we'll follow up, see how this goes. I'll do a, probably another recording in like a week if she's still bad. I'll do a recording if she's gone, but we'll see what's what. As far as I can tell, the only probable cause I can see is that something broke off that pad and has been trapped in there and it's a lump. It's a lump that's trapped in there. As soon as you get off the brakes, there's a gap. It's moved into that gap as it broke away. And when you clamp on now, it's just singing against it. I imagine the brakes didn't feel any different. So not that I noticed. And, and I was hot on, are these brakes any different? Because I can hear that noise. We'll see how she goes. Uh, we just check, I just checked up the uh, limit for the run out. So we had about 100 microns. The, um, the, uh, the service spec is it's got to be with under 150 microns and the limit is 300. So we're a third off the limit and we are under the service spec. Uh, I also checked the book for the thickness of the disc. It said between 5.2 and 4.8 brand new with a limit of 4.5. I thought, fucking cheeky bastards. <laughs> they give you 4.8 discs and it, you know, in no time they're gonna be fucking, well, in 18,000 miles they'll be fucked with the way I use them. But any road, uh, yeah, we'll um, follow up on this. Hope that makes sense. I'll see you in a bit.